and hello out there, everybody. What's going on? This is Miho, as always, with the Pit Panther podcast series, and I am joined by my co-host for this series, my old man, Pops. What's going on, man? Thanks for joining us once again this week. Miho, I'm doing just fine. Once again, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Hey, it's been a while since we talked some Pit Panthers. That's it, man. Had a few things going on, going Pit Panthers. They've become bowl eligible. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's that's good to hear. We got higher expectations. Oh, you're okay, no longer well, celebrating the first goal to become bowl eligible. Exactly, exactly right. This team, this team has higher expectations. Yeah, no, there's a lot more to achieve right now than just your six-win season right here. Because I'm going to be honest with you, man. Preseason expectations for myself, I were, there were some concerns about going bowling, dude. Looking at that schedule, a new OC, not knowing if this defense is going to be where it is. I was thinking 6-6 six and six was going to be a solid mark. So for them to get to 6-3 and three and be bowl eligible this early, I think is worthy of you know mentioning at this point. Well, I mean, that's true. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, but, you know, also suffice to say right now, if we finish 6-6, six and six, it'll be extremely disappointing. Yes, very much so, but not completely out of the question based no, on watching the no. Pitt Panthers this year. No, it's, it's not. No, it's not. Uh, yeah, Georgia Tech, man, like you said, it's been a, a little bit here, so we're not going to rehash all of the game for you guys. But just a couple of plays I wanted to bring up, uh, you know, that really stand out. One offensively, uh, we'll start on that side of the football, but the Pitt's really only big play of the day. The the Wildcat with Vincent Davis ends up taking it to the house, and uh, he showed a little bit of uh, a little bit of scoot there, man. He uh, he yeah. surprised me a little bit. He, he surprised me too. We didn't we didn't really see that, and Vincent Davis definitely showed it there. Now it was Georgia Tech granted, okay, but still, I mean, they're you know the athletes they had on the defensive side of the ball have been the, been there for a while and are expected to play well, right? It's only on the offensive side of the ball they're making some changes. So so those defensive players are all Division One recruits. Yeah, don't they're mind recruiting. you with a quick shot at Georgia Tech here early on in the podcast. <laughs> Oh, come on. Georgia Tech played a great game. They played the <laughs> and, and, and honestly, honestly, man, they had a chance to tie that game up until probably the defensive play of the game. Would you not agree? Oh, for sure. That was the other one. Obviously, they were going in. It was the, uh, the backup quarterback, I think, once again, coming in, running the ball. And he got lit up right around the goal line. And Brightwell made a, a hell of a play and a hell of a decision to scoop that ball up and try to run it back there because... He picked it up in the end zone. He uh, he certainly could have just fell on it, but went back to his high school running back days, saw himself in alley, tried to scoop and score. I thought he may have had it there for a minute, but ran out of gas, it seemed, after about 70-some yards. <laughs> Johnson, the linebacker, who continues to play very well for Pitt, he knocked the ball out, and it was actually Cam Bright that recovered the fumble. Okay. And, 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 and rumbled all the way down, I think it was to the 22-yard line. And and honestly, I was kind of impressed with his speed as well, you know, for a linebacker. Uh, you know, it took, those, it took those wide receivers a long time to catch up to him. You know, so uh, that was just a phenomenal defensive play uh, and, and changed the game around. Um, even though our offense proceeded to go backwards, but, uh, you know, Kessman bailed us out and made a big field goal there. Taking it from that point here as we, uh, you know, we had a bye week last Saturday. We're recording here Monday, getting this out Monday night or Tuesday, whenever you're listening to it, for the Thursday preview of the Carolina game. So defensively for this Pitt Panthers team, let's take a quick snapshot. We'll do kind of the same for the offense, and then we'll transition into the Tar Heels here. But you, you had asked a couple episodes ago, you know, is this defense elite? Are they just really good? What's happening? And, I mean, dude, week after week after week here, I think they're showing you that they're becoming more and more elite because I looked back on it here. These last five games that they've had, uh, I, I saw a tweet out there. It was their best five games defensively since 2001. The yardage they've given up. Listen to these, man. It's pretty incredible. Delaware, they gave up 170 yards. Duke, 288. Syracuse, 328. Miami, 208. And Georgia Tech, 194. That's total offense, dude. It's 2019. 
Passers throw for 350, 400. Hell, in college football, it's 500 yards passing alone. People score 50 points. Rushers rush for 100 yards alone. They're giving up 194 as a team or 208. That's unbelievable, man. Oh, it is. And you look at the competition they've played, and you know, you and I talked about whether or not this is an elite defense, right? And you, and of course, you're saying that they're trending in that direction. But, you know, let's be honest. Georgia Tech offense was horrible. Miami's offense was horrible. Okay, um, but I mean, they quote unquote contained UCF. And when you look at what they did at Penn State, uh, the way Penn State's continued to put points on the board, that was probably the most impressive outing of the year. So, yes, they are playing at an extremely high level. But, you know, I, was, I gave a lot of thought to this elite statement you and I are bantering back and forth about. And you, like I, you know, probably watching some of that uh, Game of the Century Part 34, the LSU-Alabama game sure. Saturday. And, and there were athletes on that field, of course. But... I, you know, I kept asking myself, how would this pit defense stack up against Alabama or, or, or LSU? Um, you know, would they hold them? Would, would they hold LSU to thirty points? You know, like they did at UCF. It, it would be, it'd be interesting to see that. And, and I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, if this defense is by definition elite, they go down in Tuscaloosa and pretty much do what LSU did. And and I would I would love to see them have that opportunity and and maybe they'll get that opportunity down the road against a bowl in a bowl game or something like that. Yeah, that's a, a tricky scenario because in my head I'm running through that and I'm going, pops. I think LSU has an elite defense and they just gave up 41 to Alabama. Right. I think Alabama's got a pretty elite defense. They gave up 46 to LSU. So if you think Pitt's going down there and giving up 28 points, you know I'm going, bro. LSU just gave up 41. Maybe if Pitt gives up 40, that means their defense is elite. Like, that's how good these offenses are, you know? And that's yeah, where... Yeah, no, the, game, the game has changed. There's right, no and, and that's where, it, you know, it is who you play. And I was posting on the, the social media forums, on the Facebook groups this week, and some of you guys listening out there may have commented or whatnot. But basically, I've come around on the fact that Pitt's defense is elite and is only going to continue to improve because this defensive line has arrived and their top two guys on paper got hurt coming into this year and are coming back with all of these guys coming back. So they you lead, the, you lead the country in sacks. You do it again next year. You start recruiting. You get more and more kids. That doesn't go anywhere. Okay, so once you get there with the front four, all of a sudden your secondaries way better. Then you sprinkle in a Paris Ford, a Pinnock, a Hamlin. You'll continue to get some of these kids because they're going, yeah, I want to play in that defense where that front four gets home all the time. I don't have to cover anybody longer than three seconds. I'm going to look fucking good. So then you do exactly that. Right. And then it continues yep. to snowball and the defense is there. So basically it comes down to whether or not Pitt's offense is ever going to figure it out. And it's honestly, I, I continue to try to be glass half full and it's the first year of a new offense, a new coordinator. Yeah, it's Pickett's second year starting, but the terminology is still all new. And, it, you know, he's still learning his players. And they they haven't had a full off season of tape and everything to improve, as well as the schedule they played, man. Because if this defense continues to just shut people down, and these are conference teams, you know what I'm saying? Like you're right. saying, oh, yeah. it's Miami, it's Syracuse, it's Duke. Well, you know, five-star kids aren't, working, aren't walking through those doors next year. So, you know, those offenses all of a sudden aren't going to be fucking lights out down in Coral Gables. Do you know what I'm saying? So yes. you should shut them down continuously as you move or at least keep them in the 20s. You know, you can't expect 10 points every week. But, I mean, it's been 10, 12, 20, no. 21, and that's what you're going to get. So if you literally get an offense that's worth half a shit and can score 24, 30 points, this pit team's going to be 10-2 and two every year just like Michigan State was because it's going to be a defensive team. Don't turn the ball over. And then we'll get into all of that. But that's where just my rant was. I'm looking at this going – they're, they're finally, like, people always say Pitt is the land of next year or, you know, however you want to put it. That, you know, next year is our year. But, like, for the first time, there's actually statistical evidence that that may be true and not just hope and, oh, maybe this kid will get better. Like, no, these kids are already good. It's getting, it's getting closer. I mean, up until this point, three, four years ago, to the year, like, Pitt beat Penn State with Canada as, as the coordinator. And, and Clemson, the same year, I believe, right? right? The, the UDP Clemson, right. I mean, their offense was fantastic. 
and their defense was suspect. Now we got to now we got to stud defense and the offense is suspect. If this program can put these two together, then, then you're right. But I do, I do agree with what you're saying. I think this program is closer to that point than they ever have been. I agree because you got to look at the young talent, and that's where you got to have a big picture viewpoint of things sometimes from a fan's perspective. You get so into the weeds with everything. Like you got to look sure. at the age of these players and the development path for next year. Like I said, this defense, they're going to need a new, another linebacker to step up. But the whole D-line's back. Most of the secondary's back. They'll be good. Okay, you get a quarterback one more year, an offensive line that'll continue to grow. Yeah, you're going to need some speed, some weapons on the outside. But it's just like for the first time, you can see on paper kind of everything coming together for, oh, we don't have a totally fucking hard schedule with some mediocre players early yes. in the year who are in new positions. Like we got a brand new left tackle, and all of a sudden now we're going down to Orlando to play UCF. Right. Or we're going to Happy Valley in week two when we don't even know what the goddamn calls are offensively. It, it's just it's finally stabilizing itself. And that's where people say this year, oh, the expectations, if, if they don't go 8-4, and four, it's a disappointment. Honestly, at the beginning of this year, if you would have told me Pitt would have been 8-4, and four, I would have told you they had a hell of a year based on the schedule and kind of what they had back, man. Oh, absolutely right. I mean, absolutely right. I mean, with the, with just with the non-conference schedule alone. Right? right. Like I told you, I said, you get through that 2-2, two and two, it's as good as it's going to get. It really is. I mean, realistically, you were staring at 1-3. and three, Anything above it was, you know, gravy on top. You look at the conference schedule just based on everybody lays out. Yeah, you're going to go five and two in those seven games. So if you're one and three, you're, you're seven and four, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, yep. it's yep. finally there. And it's finally exciting just to kind of be like, hey, for the first time, I really do think this defense isn't going anywhere. None of these teams are going to improve astronomically between this year and next in the coastal. And there's no reason to think Pitt shouldn't be favored and or right there once again. I, I couldn't agree more. A absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. It's going to be, I think the future's bright to say the least. Yeah. So I mean, basically the future, we'll, we'll dive back into this Thursday in these next three games because I was reading uh, football power index, the FPI, you know, the buzzword people like to see here. And basically it, it's a computer algorithm. And once again, I know you're big on the saber metrics. So this is right up your I, alley, yeah. but yes, uh, mm -hmm. they ran yes. 10,000 simulations. And this Thursday, your Pitt Panthers won 50.2% yes. of those simulations. So, 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 so we're winning the game and recovering. And so even the computer has no fucking clue what's about to happen <laughs> on Thursday is basically what I'm telling you. Give us well, your thoughts, man. Is this well, the year we finally beat Carolina? Hey, the computer may not have a clue, but obviously the pundits and the bookies in Vegas like the Pitt Panthers. What are they, six and a half point favorites? Six and a uh, half, but as I was searching here while you were talking and I was talking, uh, public money coming in on the heels because it is down to five Pitt Panthers, oh. minus five. So money's coming in on the Tar Heels, obviously shifting the line. I wouldn't be surprised if that gets down to like four, three and a half by Thursday, man. I was surprised yeah, that, at and six. That would be a that would be a big shift. That would be a big shift in one week's time. Well, listen, I, you know, I don't have to tell everybody that's on this call. You know, these are all Pitt Panther fans. Listen, this we we have been North Carolina yet. You know, every year we say you know, the motivation is there, but there's so much more on the line again. This team will be focused. There's no two, there's no doubt about that. You know, they're coming off a bye week. Yeah, they're yeah, they're all they were all off Saturday before yeah, and right. after with these Thursday circus games. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I keep losing track. Totally so, fucks uh, the whole schedule. So no, it, yeah, right. So I mean, you know, Kevin, I, you know, it, I hate to be a broken record, but I mean, it's it's the truth. It's going to be the truth for North Carolina. It's going to be the truth for the last three games. The defense will keep this team in the game. It's what the offense decides to do. You know, Miami, the offense didn't show up, and it was a loss. Right? The defense played a fantastic game. They should have won that football game. Okay? We're going to see more of the same from the defense the rest of the way. I'll be very surprised if any of these teams put 30, 40 points up on the board against us. Um, so, North Carolina, they can be explosive. I mean, they have some talent. They got a hot shot freshman uh, quarterback. And uh, how's his name, I believe? What's his quarterback rating? 153? Yeah, Sam Howe. <laughs> He's having a hell of a year. He's thrown for over. 153? I think our. I think our beloved Kenny Pickett's like in the 90s. 
So you know, Pickett's so, I mean, not that low. Um, his rating is actually okay. It's a little bit tricky, honestly, when you get into the quarterback battle because I wrote down a Pickett stat too. Uh, when it comes to like efficiency compared to QBR compared to this type of shit, because basically, so Sam Howell, he's lights out. There's no doubt about that. He's, uh, he's literally him and I believe it was Joe Burrow from LSU are the only two quarterbacks in all of college football to have over 25 touchdowns and under five interceptions. So the guy doesn't turn the ball over. He's got 26 touchdowns. They've thrown it 300 times here. I, you know, so they like to throw the rock, man. Mac Brown, he, he likes to sling it. And to your point, um, they're averaging 28 points a game. So they can score, they can be effective, but Pitt's MO this year has been holding the other team under their average. I think it's happened like six or seven weeks in a row. So based on that, the heels are going to be in the 20s. It's literally to your point of whether or not Pitt can score that many points. And the original point with Pickett, like I said, I had it written down. So Pickett is 100 out of 113 in pass efficiency for quarterbacks at the Division One level. But, you you know, you do the drops, you take that in, the offense, how he throws sideways, all of that shit. It, it goes up a little bit, so he goes up to 66th in QBR. So, you know, he's still not a top quarterback, but you can see how just the style of offense can affect these rankings because he's throwing all those bubble screens to French and, you know, he's got all these short passes and things like that, that there's nothing he can do about it. It's just the style of offense, but no doubt about it. Advantage of quarterback goes to the heels on Thursday. Yeah. Honestly, though, we'll, we'll see. Though. I don't think this kid has seen a defense like Pitts yet. I mean, you know, you look at their schedule. I mean, they, they play South Carolina, they play Miami. You know, we all know Miami's got an athletic defense. I'm no sure Clemson's that, defense but, uh, is pretty good. But you can, I'm sorry? Clemson probably has a pretty good defense. Clemson, Clemson. Oh, yeah, those guys. Yeah, he um, stared down that yeah, barrel no, to a two-point conversion right. all the way at the end. And they, and they gave Clemson all they could handle. That's they the reason them. Clemson was fifth and not fourth, was that uh, exactly. you know they were three yards away from losing to these heels, who in turn, somehow, I think the week before or the week after, one of the two, uh, loses to Appalachian State. But now Appalachian <laughs> State's ranked 24th in the country. So I don't know what the hell's going on here, man. I know it's college football. Oh, it really know. is. It really is. So, I mean, it comes down to it. Basically, I figured out like Pitt's offense because they they rank 115th in explosive plays. Pitt just doesn't have big playability, and the reason they struggle offensively is because when you can't hit the big play, that obviously means you have to sustain drives for 5, 10, 15 plays to go 60 to 70 yards. Well, if you're going to sustain drives, what do you have to do well? You have to catch the football and not turn the football over since you're going to have 10 to 15 of these opportunities every drive instead of 2 to 3 because you have the big plays. Well, they don't do those things well. So that's where you basically shoot yourselves in the foot because you don't have explosive ability, so you got to put eight straight positive plays together, and they just can't do it. So I don't know where this big play is coming from. Maybe a little bit more of that wildcat offense. We saw that be effective at both yeah, in the I mean, Miami game and the Georgia Tech game. Actually, that wildcat offense, they, they, they've been using more and more lately. It's been, it's been successful for them all year. And, uh, uh, you know, you'll definitely see more of that. There's, there's no question about it. You'll definitely see more of that. But, you know, Kevin, like every week I keep saying that this is the week the offense puts it all together. This is the week we put it all together. And you know what? I, I am just, I think I'm done pounding my head against the wall. I'm thinking, I think you made a point, you know, we are who we are. And, and I, I don't see all of a sudden everything clicking and, and, um, you know, we're us putting 40 points on the board. I don't, I don't see it happening. I don't, I don't see it happening unless you have special teams play, you know, an interception for a touchdown or something like that. I don't think so, man. And then lastly, but, you know, we'll, we'll wrap up with this and then the, the little bit of bold talk, but, uh, it's going to be a cold night in Pittsburgh on a Thursday night where the and Steelers play on the same night. Yeah, what scheduling genius put that together? So, there, like, is anybody going to be at this game and or watching this game in the Pittsburgh market and or out of the Pittsburgh market? And, and, and here's, here's the other odd thing about this game. It's a Thursday night ESPN game. It starts at 8 o'clock. These games, I thought, usually start at 7, 7.30. You know, I figure, hell, maybe people go to the game for a half and then they'll go follow the Steelers or whatever. But they're almost on the exact same time 
that the Steelers want. So, no, I'm, I'm saying that plenty of good seats will be available in Heinz Field Thursday, unfortunately. But here's a question I have for you. Where does the voice of the Pitt Panthers and the voice of the Pittsburgh Steelers go? Is Ooh. he going to be at the Mistake by the Lake, or is he going to be at Heinz Field? Our beloved Bill Hillgroff. It's going to be curious to see where he's at. Yeah, he's got to be with the Steelers, right? I don't know what his contractual obligations are. I would think that's the case, but I believe he's been a Pitt Panther announcer longer than he's been a Steeler announcer. I'll tag him on the social media, see what he's getting into. See if they need a fill-in for Thursday. Maybe I can get out there quick, do the game. (laughs) There you go. Do the game. (laughs) So, but hey, give me, uh, give me your predictions for this Thursday. And then parlay that into your predictions for kind of the rest of the year, where you're thinking, where you're feeling, because we've teased the the bowl projections, and uh, people have the Pitt Panthers all over, man. So how are you feeling? You know, last kind of little, uh, you know, gut check. We got three games left. What 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 do you got, man? Well, you know, we'll start with Thursday night. I'm looking at. I mean, this offense just scares me, and like I said earlier, unless we have a I mean, the pit offense scares me. Unless we have a special teams play or something like that, I'm looking at North Carolina 21, pit 17, unfortunately. Um, and then the rest of the way, I think, which means I think this team's going to have 8-4. So that means, obviously, I haven't beaten Virginia Tech in, and um, Boston College. But I think, I think North Carolina is probably the best of those three teams are going to play right now. I agree with you on the eight and four. I think they beat BC. They're going to split with Carolina and Virginia Tech. I haven't decided or figured out which one of those games is which yet because Pitt just goes against every metric. I mean, they're what one and two at home. They always lose those games. They always lose to Carolina, so that everything's lining up there like that's an L. And then they go on a road to a tough environment. Well, they'll win a tough game on the road against Virginia Tech in a game they should lose. Like they should win this Thursday. They're favored at home against an under five hundred team. They'll dump that one. Then they'll wake up the next week, go down to Tech, beat a team that'll probably win this weekend again. You know, win there, and you're just like, "What the hell's going on here?" Like, thanks, thanks. the moment you think you know, you just have no clue. But I, I do see the eight and four. Um, you know, I, I don't think, to your point, just the offense is going to be good enough to to run through these last three. But at the same time, you had ten days of Thursday. And then you have 10 days again before Virginia Tech. So yes, we're at yes. the point in the season where I got to see some trickeration. I got to see some, you know, I want to see some plays that are, well, we're saving that, you know, or yeah, let's not use exactly. that yet. You know, let, let's exactly. take a shot, yeah, man. Never, you know, a fake never, punt or a fake field goal or, a, you know, fourth and whatever. Like, it, it's time to just put it all out. Who gives a shit what's on film now? And you're six and three. You know you're not going for the national playoffs. Like you know, give me more of the uh, the pit special, the Philly special. Yes. You know, give me yes. give me some of that type of stuff on a third and short. You know, yank it and go deep to the tight end instead of handing well, it to the yeah, fullback. They, they ran a little razzle dazzle at Syracuse, right? And uh, yeah, there you go. Right, and they, and you know, Narduzzi has in the past pulled out the fake punts and things like that. Come to think of that was against Syracuse too, but uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> maybe that's the comment. That that's it. He's play. just like Syracuse sucks at these <laughs> plays. We only run trick plays against the Qs. They're never but, prepared. But, but, but more importantly, too, it's okay. You know, I haven't heard anything about Todd Sibley. You know, was that a a, um, a year-ending injury or is nicked up? Okay, and the other guy that's concerning is to Sir Mac. I mean, he's been banged up a little bit, and they they haven't run him deep at all. No, ever so, since the foot or whatever it was, he was in the right, boot for exactly. a little bit. So kind of it's been a struggle. That, yeah, I'm kind of hoping that's you, because like if you recall Penn State, to see Mac was going deep. He was running deep routes. They and, ran one uh, time at Georgia Tech, and it was like a back shoulder type of throw, and yes. it was once at uh, Miami, too. It was really only one a game where they are just giving him a 50-50 ball. Yes, exactly right. You know, so, you know, I mean, if they think that this line can give pick a time against the Carolina front four, I'd like to see us throw the ball downfield a little bit more. Absolutely right. And, ha- and, ha- and have our receivers hold on to the football. Yeah, that's it, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and run forward. Exactly. North exactly. and south. But, yeah, I don't know, man. It's tough. Like you said, the defense is going to keep it in it, and the offense is going to have a chance to win the football game. You know, just – just like the last five weeks, and to their credit, man, 
when they've had to make plays in every game except for the Miami one, uh, you know, they've made them. So, it, you know, truly, it's it's just one of those things where I'm glad you've kind of, uh, you know, lowered expectations. You no longer think this offense is going to come out and light shit up and just – this is this is who we're getting, man. Pitt's defense is going to keep a minute. There's going to be a couple different turnovers, and we're going to have a game in the fourth quarter. It's just sit back and enjoy watching it, dude. Instead of having a heart attack, just to try to enjoy the ride once in a while, no, man. That, that, no, no, no. That, that heart attack stroke every Saturday. You know, it's like it's a roller coaster, dude. Just put the hands up and enjoy the twists and turns, brother, because they're coming. All right? They're coming. I'm telling you right now they're coming. There's going to be a loop-de-loop out of nowhere that you didn't see coming out of a tunnel because it's all dark and shit, dude. So just put the hands up and enjoy it, man. And part of that was, you know, I got I, I have an ulterior motor with my predictions and my concern, so I'm thinking, okay, if I start going the other way, maybe they'll win, maybe they'll line it up, and we'll go from there. <laughs> there you go. I like it. Okay. Exactly right. Exactly right. Exactly right. Does, but, oh, man, that was fun. Thanks for joining me once again here. Obviously, you know, we'll be back early next week to break down the Carolina game and touch on the Virginia Tech Hokies coming up, where either the, the Panthers will have dumped their seventh in a row to the Tar Heels or – uh, you know, and uh, something crazy happened, and they finally won a game at home that uh, that they should have. So it's it's wild, man, that they just they can't win at home. I don't get it. I don't get it. I know, I know. But hey, can I can I give one more observation about this upcoming game against Carolina? Sure. A, a matchup that I am really looking forward to seeing. Okay. How about by the way, the best name in college football, Shocky Shock Louis? Yes. Going going deep against the. North Carolina defensive back named Storm Duck. No okay, so way. We got, we got <laughs> Storm Duck. Oh, I'm Googling this right, real we, quick. We got Chucky, Jacques Louis versus Storm Duck. That's a matchup I'm looking to see Thursday night. Wow. He's a corner. 6'1", <laughs> 200. Yeah, there he is. Right. There you go. Oh, I'm, I'm looking goodness. forward to it. That is funny. I'm looking forward. That is funny. That is certainly another uh, submission into the name of the year in college football. (laughs) So you guys listening out there, watch the games on Saturday in the back of your mind. Let us know. Tweet us. Tag us. Storm Duck. There's got to be. Right, there's got to be others out there. And uh, hey, I'm going to be in attendance Thursday. Let's hope it's cold because I think that will be an advantage for Pitt. No question about it. So, so hey, all you Yinzers. Don't worry about the Steelers Thursday night. It's only the Browns. It's a W. Don't worry about it. Tune into the Pitt Panthers. Show up at Heinz Field. And Ali Kanakanak and hail the Pitt. Peace.